All right, guys, this is lesson topic 60. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, this is an important one because this is basically what you're going to be doing for the rest of the time in one form or another. Now, I know you're sick of it, because I'm sick of it, of doing uh, remum sums, all right, because they're tedious, they're just, they're just kind of a pain, all right? So uh, this one is going to get around that, basically. So on this one right here, to to make sure you understand this, remember that if this is the position function, right? If we take the derivative, well, let's find the displacement. Now, to find the displacement, all we have to do is plug in this interval values. This are x values, by the way, and figure out what that is. All right, so this displacement, let me write in pen. Uh, I apologize. It'll look better. Maybe you can see it better. Displacement. Is equal to s of two minus s of zero, and that is going to be if you plug in, let's see, a two here. That's going to give you four times two is eight plus one. That's going to be nine, and if you plug in a zero, well, that's going to give you one. So nine minus one, and that is eight. All right now, what they want you to do on the next one is they want you to find the derivative of this. Remember, the derivative of displacement we know that's velocity, right? So the derivative is going to be equal to 4t. Right now, they want you to find the area under this uh, line between 0 and 2. Okay, so uh, let's see our x y intercept is a 0. Then I'm going up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. Okay. Uh, let's see, I'll do one more point here. So we have that line right there. Now they want us to find the area between 0 and 2, which would be, let's see, it would be that right there. That's kind of a, not a perfect graph. So they want us to find the area under the curve for that. Now, that right there, we know that the integral between 0 and 2 of 4t in other words, before we had to, kind of, we kind of have to depend on do we know what the, the formula for this geometric figure that we have is, all right? And in this case, we do is one half the base. The base happens to be two. The height happens to be eight, okay? And that's going to give you eight. Now, please notice that this number and that number are exactly the same. All right, so notice that they're exactly the same, so therefore that must mean that the, ant the antiderivative of 4t dt between 0 and 2 is equal to the displacement between 2 and 0, okay? And that is actually going to lead us to something pretty important, which is the fundamental the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we have f of x dx is equal to f of b minus f of a. All right, when I, uh, when I put a capital F, that basically means that that's the antiderivative of f. Okay, so this, if you don't understand what this means, this basically what we just did over here. All right, so the fundamental, term, the fundamental theorem of calculus says that if you take the integral of this, you're gonna uh, you're gonna plug in this upper limit here, and then figure out what the numeric value is, and then you're gonna plug in the a, this lower limit here, and then you're gonna figure out what the numeric value is here, and when you subtract them, you get the the area under the curve. All right, assuming that f of x is continuous and differential. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. Well, before we do that, I guess we got to do this. There's not a whole lot to say here. It just basically means you're going to write it like that. So when you have it like this, you're going to write it like this, and it's going to look like that. So I'm about to write that here in a second. So if you don't understand what that means, don't worry about it. I'm about to do it. So other things that you must know, especially this one, it's important, 
if you have something, an interval between A and B, and they give it to you like this, B, where this one's um, the upper limit like that, you can write it as negative A and B. Uh, you can always split up an uh, integral, such as this one right here. So let's do a few examples. So this one, all right, let's quickly go through this one. So we're going to take the antiderivative. Now, I know we haven't talked about antiderivatives in a while, but that's what we're going to do. All right, so we know that the antiderivative of x squared is going to be x cubed over 3, and the antiderivative of 3 is going to be 3x. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the value of that function is. All right, so basically all we're going to do is we're going to plug in a 2 for x first. So we have, let's see, we have 2 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 2. And then we're going to subtract that from, well, now we're going to plug in a 1 here. So we have 1 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 1. Okay. And this is equal to 8 over 3 minus 6. Let's see. And this one is minus one third minus three, blah, blah, blah. The answer is negative two thirds. Okay. So that means that the area is negative. Just a quick sketch of what that would look like. Uh, that would look like this. So we have one, two, and three. And then it kind of goes, there's one and there's two. And there's one, one. So it kind of does this number. All right, so uh, it's probably not the greatest graph. The, uh, the area, this little figure right here, the shape should be bigger. Anyway, so let me show you how to do it on the calculator. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, I'm only telling you this so you can check your answer. So you can check it in two different ways. Now, well, first of all, you need to put the original equation that you had here. So you have x squared minus 3. Now, there's other ways to do this, and I'll show you that other way in just a second. So you have that right there. Now, when you go to second calculate, you're going to go down to option number seven. Now, an option number seven is going to wait for you to actually graph that, and it's going to ask you for the lower limit. Now, the lower limit is that number right there. It's one. I press enter. Upper limit, well, you're going to put a two there. And there's the area, which is negative 0.6666, which is the same thing as negative two over three. All right. Um, and again, if that doesn't look like my picture, I mean, I guess I can zoom it in so you can see it better, I suppose. Yeah, well, I guess I'll have to do that all over again. And so there it is. That's what it's supposed to look like, okay? So, again, how do you get to that is you press second, calculate, and you go to option number seven, and that'll basically get you to the screen that you want. Now, there's other ways to do this, um, but I found this to be the easiest one, so if you want to do it any other way, you can also press math. You can put math and number nine, and then see math number nine actually gives you that exactly, and you can put it there. But I personally kind of like to see the shape, but it's really up to you how you do this. Right, and you just put an X there center there's the answer again if you want to get to that one more time you press math and you press the number nine and there it is okay so again pretty simple um, let's go to the next problem here now after this this is basically like what we've done in the past except for now uh, we have definite integrals which means we're gonna have to evaluate those integrals, right? This would be the same thing as 3x to the 1 half dx. So we're going to integrate this. 
Now that would give us 3x to the 3 halves over 3 halves, which is, let's see, 2x to the 3 halves. And we're going to evaluate that between 1 and 4. We're going to evaluate it at 4 and 1. Okay, so we're going to plug in 4 first. So we got 2, 4 to the 3 halves minus 2, 1. Now the 1 came from this one, minus 3 halves. And that is going to give us 16 minus 2, which is 14. All right, notice that it's a positive area. Now on the next one, all right, on this one, you have an absolute value. Now, remember, you can check this in your calculator. I understand that. But if you're not going to have a calculator like on the test, every time you have an absolute value, you need to break this. All right, so I'm going to draw a little graph of what this looks like. It's going to look something like that. Now, obviously, this is a sketch here. So this would be 2. OK, so this would be 0. OK. So what that means is that before you actually do this problem by hand, that is, right, before you actually do this problem by hand, you need to find that point right there. You need to find the bottom of that. Okay, so to figure that out, remember the break always happens. So you're going to break this apart where the absolute value is equal to zero. All right, so I need to figure that out. So here's what that means. If you have 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, and you solve for x, you get x is equal to 1 half. All right, and if you want to do it the other way too, if you have like that, if you have this, well, that will give you this, which still is going to give you x is equal to 1 half. All right, so we're going to break this apart between 0 and 1 half. Okay. Now notice that on this one, between zero and a half, you're actually going. You're negative, all right. Your slope is negative, so you're actually going down. So on this one, we're going to say that the left-hand side, negative slope here, is this. We're going to add that, and now we're going to go between one half and two. Now notice that this is positive, all right. Again, this line right here would be the equivalent of this line, negative two x, negative two x plus one. That's what that would be. Okay, now this line right here will be the equivalent of 2x minus 1. So this would be 2x minus 1 dx, and we're going to evaluate that between 1 half and 2. Okay, so now let me quickly go through this. That will give us, let's see, negative x squared minus x, and we're going to evaluate that between 0 and 1 half. We're going to add that to x squared minus x. We're going to evaluate that between 1 half and 2, or add 1 half and 2. And then finally, if we do all that, OK, so let's see. I don't know if I need to write it all. But basically, all of that is going to give us one fourth, and all of this is going to give us nine fourths. So remember, on this one, I have to have one half square minus one half minus zero minus zero, and you kind of have to do something similar, all right? So you actually have two things here and two things here, and when what you have after this is that this is equal to ten over four, which is five halves, or two point five. Now check this on the calculator, all right? Check on the calculator. So for all of these on the homework, for most of these at least, you should be able to check those on the calculator. So I shouldn't even have to put a key for you. All right, last but not least here, now if you understand it, you can just shut me off 
and move on. All right, but if you still kind of don't get it, right, same thing, we're going to take the antiderivative of this. This is going to be 2x. The antiderivative of negative cosecant or cosecant squared would be this. Mm, negative cotangent x. Okay, which is 2x plus cotangent x. We're going to evaluate that at pi over 4 and at pi over 2. Right, so we would have, let's see, we have, if we plug in a pi over 2 here, that's going to give me pi. So we have pi, my, or sorry, plus cotangent of pi over 2 minus pi over 2 plus cotangent of pi over 4. And then that is going to give me the cotangent of pi over 2 is 0. And the cotangent of pi over 4 is 1. Right, so notice that I, that would give me pi minus pi over 2 minus 1, which is going to give me pi over 2 minus 1. I realized I was off screen. All right, that's going to give me that. Now, again, uh, make sure you work through this one yourself. All right, now, pi over t minus 1, if you do that on the calculator, is going to give you something, um, a numeric value, not a pi symbol. But anyway, it should be the same. Now, let's go through the back now and talk about something that we kind of more or less already talked about. Okay, now, on this one right here, um, the displacement of an object, right, is the integral of velocity. We already knew that. And the total distance, though, the total distance is the absolute value of the velocity, and then you take the integral. So this, too, as hard as I may look, this actually should be the fastest. You can do this, too, in the calculator. So they're asking us to find the total distance, all right? So in this one, I'm actually trying to find... the antiderivative of the absolute value of velocity, which in this case is t cubed plus 3t squared minus 4t minus 3, all right, with respect to t. Now, <coughs> I would recommend using a calculator completely on this, all right? So you're okay, use the calculator on that. I don't want you to do this by hand necessarily unless you want to. And when you do, you get approximately 6.831, okay? So, using calculator. All right, now, this is A. Now, for B, to find the displacement, well, the displacement is just, you're just going to take, we already talked about this before, the antiderivative of velocity is displacement. So, we have t cubed plus 3t squared minus 4t minus 3 dt and when you do, you get around negative 2. Okay? So again, that's the total distance traveled, and this is the total displacement. All right, other than that, I think that this is going to be one of your easiest uh, lessons to go through. Again, if you got any questions, make sure you contact me on my Twitter account. Uh, if you send a message and remind, I will get it. I just, I'd rather you do it over Twitter, because then that way, maybe some people have the same question you do. All right, good luck.